So we made it. We made it to our final mistake out of our five mistakes that dancers make when it comes to dancing with confidence. And mistake number five is believing that confidence will come with more training, more knowledge, more practice, uh, better technique. And I hear this from dancers a lot. If I improve my technique, I'll be more confident. If I knew more dances, I'll be more confident. If I learn more, practice more, get better at something, acquire this skill, I'll be more confident. Well, I'm here today. I'm here today to break that belief. I'm here to tell you that no amount of technique, practice, or learning will make you dance with more confidence. It might help a little bit. But to really dance with confidence, we cannot rely on all of these external factors. So if we think back to mistake number three, comparing ourselves to other dancers, we talked about avoiding doing this because it makes us focus on what we can't do instead of what we can. And that affects our confidence level. So the same goes for believing that a certain amount of training will improve your confidence. Once again, you are focusing on what you don't have at this moment. And it's great to have and to set goals, right? It's, it's a good thing. But it's also important not to rely on something that's quite abstract because what does more training mean? What is better technique mean? It's something very abstract. It's not precise, right? And it may or may not happen in the future. So relying on it is, is a problem. The other problem with believing that confidence will change based on training is that you're relying on external factors. And even though it's true that confidence is affected by how well we perceive our performance, so the performance itself matters, it also very much comes from within us, right? And like we talked about yesterday, we have to work on both directions, right? In and out and pay as much attention, if not more, to our inner world than anything external. So we mentioned on day one that confidence is also directly influenced by our belief system. And our brain constantly tries to prove to us that our beliefs are correct. If I believe that I'm not a good dancer, no amount of technique will change that belief. And even if I do improve, I might not even be able to see it or I will see it but claim it's not enough or not yet where I want to be and why because it doesn't align with my belief system and I know this from experience right I've shared with you here in the past that I grew up with ballet training and I have basically a lifetime of Israeli dance experience under my belt. So it's quite safe to say that I don't really lack in technique. Did that make me a confident dancer? No, really not. For most of my life, I danced behind the circle. I never felt comfortable to go inside the circle or <clears throat> even dance on the circle with other people, I, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable when people watched me dance. Okay. So my lack of confidence came, came from within and my technique and training didn't change that. And when people said to me, Oh, you're such a good dancer. I didn't believe them. I thought maybe they don't want to hurt my feelings or maybe they just, don't know what a good dancer looks like. And that's because I didn't believe it myself. And 
And that's the issue with this, okay? With relying on something external when actually inside, we don't really believe it. Hi, Dee. Thanks for being here. So what do we do? What do we do? This one is a little more tricky because it's directly related to our belief system because our belief system was created when we were kids and depending on how old you are, that's the number of years of experiences that have helped reinforce what we believe about ourselves. So even if you started dancing as an adult, your dancing confidence level is directly influenced by your confidence level about other aspects of your life. For example, what you believe about your ability to learn, to make changes in your life, to understand music and so on, it's all connected. So for us to really work on our confidence from within, we need to dig deeper and peel some layers. And with some techniques and tools we can, that we can use, we can work on making changes. And although this is not an easy peasy kind of task, and it does take some energy and courage, it's something that we can do. And again, I know this from experience because I myself went through a process of confidence work and it was worth it. Does it mean that I'm now the most confident dancer you'd ever meet? No, of course not. I still have moments where I'm not confident about something, but those moments are now rare rather than the norm. And I now have the tools to notice when I lack confidence and I know what to do to boost it in that moment when I need it. And I really want to share these tools with you. I want you to also be in a place where you don't rely on other dancers for choreography, which was mistake number one, but on yourself and your body. I want you to be in a place where you don't compare yourself to other dancers and feel you're not good enough, which was mistake number two, but that you focus on your own amazing worth. I want you to be in a place where you don't feel judged when you dance, mistake number three, but that you can just enjoy what you're doing in the way that you do it. I want you to be in a place where you don't need to pay constant attention to your posture, which was mistake number four, but that it's part of your muscle memory and is reinforced by your inner confidence. And I want you to be in a place where you don't wait for an abstract future goal to feel confident, which is mistake number five, but that you feel confident now, today, and any future improvement is just a bonus. So if you've had the chance this week to kind of look inward, notice your confidence level and how it makes you feel, and you've noticed that you make one or all of these mistakes and they're all in the group uh, so you can go and rewatch them and you would like to explore this further to see how to improve your confidence level and I really encourage you to write me please let's do this together okay I'm here to support you I really really am um, so you can write me on Facebook if it feels comfortable for you, or you can email me if you prefer. And in a second, I'll put my email in the chat. So you can definitely email me. And, you know, this week I gave you some things to think about and some tools to use, but you really don't have to do it alone. Okay. You really don't have to do it alone. In fact, it's harder to do it alone and can be sometimes quite discouraging. So, I really hope you reach out and take some time to think, to go inward, and then reach out to me if, if you feel um, comfortable to do so. And I really hope to connect with you soon. 